بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. Continuing on our study of the treaties, أخير تواصلية by Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah رحمه الله تعالى. We read some portion of the treaties where Sheikh Islam رحمه الله تعالى said to have faith. In the attributes which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qualified for himself. And this is really what the whole treaty is when we talked about from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirmed for himself uh, his divine names and attributes. Shaykh al Islam mentioned uh, some of the text and some of the importance and the argumentation which refutes Ahl al Bidah and Il Had. So Shaykh al Islam he said, rising of Allah over the throne does not negate his having being with his creatures, meaning him uh, being with his creatures. So we need to go to the details now of what that means, showing us that these sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, do not negate one another. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Ar-Rahman al ar Allah says about himself that he rules above his throne, that does not negate that doesn't negate the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you uh, wherever you uh, are. And again, we don't ask the kafi, and that's the madhab of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So, Shaykh al Islam said, whatever we've stated about having faith in Allah also includes having faith in that thing which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described in his book and is repeatedly proved from the Sunnah of the Prophet and the Salaf of the Ummah had consensus upon this. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above his throne and is separate from his creatures. But Allah the exalted is with his creatures wherever they are. So Shaykh Islam is now showing us that these two concepts do not negate one another. He knows whatever people do. As he says in the verse, he it is who created the heavens and the earth in six days then rose over the throne in a manner that suits his majesty. He knows what goes into the earth and what comes forth from it, what descends from the heaven and what ascends thereto, and he is with you by his knowledge wheresoever you may be, and the law is the all seer of what you do. That's beautiful. In Surah Al Hadith, right there already, nothing else needs to be said. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in that ayah, he showed both of his divine attributes that he has full knowledge of every. Uh, uh, and, uh, of his creatures, he's with them, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that he rose above, uh, above the throne in a manner that suits his majesty. So right there, that negates those who negate and argue uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, the fact his attribute of rising above his throne contradicts uh, being with his creatures, meaning being with them through his knowledge, his ilm, and hearing and seeing. The meaning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement, and he is with you, is not that he is part and parcel of the creation. Even though those people who claim Ahl Sunnah is from the Majestima, they lie and negate. Here we are making Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah is freeing himself from that. He said, The meaning of Allah's statement, and he is with you, is not that he is part and parcel of the creation. Uh, in the language, the language doesn't explain this. Even in the language, it doesn't mean this. He said, the moon is a sign from the signs of Allah and amongst his small creatures, and it has been kept in the heaven. He said, but even then, it is with the traveler and the non-traveler, traveler, wherever they are. Meaning that you can see the moon, uh, you know, in the depths of the night, it's still present. And that's within the creation. And that's not making a comparison between Allah, the Almighty, and His creation. Allah, the exalt, so that shows us even in the language that that's possible. So what about Rabbil Alameen, who all things are possible with Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah, the exalted, is keeping a watch on His creatures from His throne, and is uh, a watchtower to the, He watches over them. Whatever Allah has mentioned, that is, He is above the heavens and is with us, is true in its essence. There is no point for distortion in it, but one must avoid conjectures and hunches. So don't go into to things that you have no knowledge about. For example, 
the speculation that the statement of Allah fi sama has the apparent meaning as the heaven is overshadowing him and is surrounding him. This is false from the point of view of men of learning, the people of knowledge, as well as those people who have iman. The kursi of Allah is encompassed both over the heavens and the earth. He protects the heavens and the earth from falling apart and saves the heavens by his command that it might not fall on the earth. This is from one of the signs that the heaven and the earth remain established by his uh, command, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Sheikh Islam mentioned, he said also it's from the man to have faith in the attributes which Allah qualified for himself. And we said this, this the treatise is countless, uh, where the Prophet said, and when my slave asks you, uh, or when uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, in the Quran, and when my slave asks you uh, concerning, concerning me, then answer them, I am indeed near. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is near in his knowledge. This is sort of the And the Prophet sallallahu says, the one whom you are calling is nearer to you than the neck of your riding animal. Letting us know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close to us in his knowledge. He knows fully all, everything about us. And he hears everything and sees everything, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The closeness of Allah and his companionship that is mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah is not opposed to the transcendence and dominance of Allah the glorified. For in all the attributes, there is nothing like Allah. And he is high in his closeness and close in his, his stature. Having, Allah, uh, having faith in Allah and his books includes having faith in those things uh, also. That the Quran which is the speech of Allah, has been sent down and is uncreated. It began by, uh, it began from Allah and will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Allah has already spoken in it. The Quran is the speech of Allah, it's the divine speech of Allah. And this Quran which has been sent down to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by Allah is really the, the, the speech of Allah, not of any other being. To apply the word reporting is not permissible for the reason that it purports, purports to be the speech of Allah or is its interpretation. But rather when people read it or write it in scriptures, then in reality it does not get excluded from being the speech of Allah. It's the Kalam of Allah. In fact, the speech is related to that, to that one who has spoken at the beginning and not on the one who has communicated it from him or done or rendering of it. That is beautiful from Shaykh Islam, showing you he was able to deal with the people of the Kalam, the people of philosophy and so forth, through their own arguments, based on Kitabi Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, letting us know that the Quran is the divine speech of Allah. It is not reported speech from the angels. It is not reported speech from something. It has no distortions in it. It is the divine speech of Allah the Almighty. And it is not reported speech, so it's not permissible to claim that it's reported speech. And even when people are reciting the Quran, it began with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's still the kalam of Allah, it's still the speech of Allah, even though, and Allah created the sound that you're uttering, yes. Allah created the letters, if you write an ayah, you write it on the whiteboard or what have you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all of these things. But it's still the divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is uncreated. The source, where it came from, it came from Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is one of his divine attributes, tabarak wa ta'ala. Uh, to apply the word reporting is not permissible for the reason that it purports to be the speech of Allah, to be the speech of Allah, or is it that it's an, inter that it's an interpretation of the speech of Allah. But rather when people read it or write it in scriptures, then in reality it does not get excluded from being the speech of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, the speech is related to the to that one who has spoken it at the beginning, who spoke, who, who has spoken it at the beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran. And not on that who has communicated it from him or done a rendering of it. Thus the Quran is the speech of Allah with letters and meanings. It is not so that the letters are the speech of Allah, but not the meanings, or that the meanings are the speech, but not the letters. So Shaykh al-Islam is dealing with those people, the people of philosophy. In the in this aspect of faith in Allah, and the faith in his books, his angels, and his, his prophets, which we've already mentioned in the, the six pillars of Iman, this faith is also included that the faithful believers will see Allah face to face with their own eyes on the day of judgment. And we mentioned that already in previous in our lectures. 
Just as they see the sun in the clear atmosphere in a cloudless sky. And just as they see a full moon when there is no obstruction in its visibility. The believers will likewise see Allah in the plane of resurrection. Then they will see him again after entering paradise in whatever form Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. So those are some of the important things. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept this good, to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. And we'll continue on uh, in our next dars talking about Iman uh, re with regards to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu and what will take place after death. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept from us and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.